Welcome to the video lecture series in marketing research facilitated by Edgar Husky. For lecture number two, we'll be talking about developing the research problem. In this lecture, you will go over the steps for identifying and developing the problem, outline those steps, and we'll also discuss what will go in the research proposal that you would present a client. We look at the steps in developing the research problem. First, we're going to list those steps in order. First step is to meet with the client. Second step is to clarify the problem. The third step is to state the manager's decision problem. The fourth step is to develop a full range of possible research problems. The last, the fifth step is to select a research problem. And the sixth step is to prepare and submit the research request. When we talk about meeting with the, the client, just like any meeting that you're going to have, we want to make sure that we identify what the purpose of the meeting is. Even though meeting with the client seems like a pretty obvious item to have on the list, the one thing we have to look at is why are we doing it? A, a big mistake researchers make is they go into these meetings or they go into the research process thinking that they know the solution. And sometimes that is part of the downfalls of doing your research internally through your own inside departments, is people who are associated with the company have a tendency to feel that they know what the problem is. This meeting needs to hap happen early on in the process. And one of those things you're going to determine through this meeting is identify the differences between opinions and facts. And so when you are meeting with the managers or whoever is in charge of the concern that you're covering, a lot of times they have their own specific opinion about what the problem is, but they don't have the facts to back it up. Uh, one year we did a research study at the school where we evaluated the food service company. And all the students in class thought that the problem that they were going to see is that the, f the price of the food was too high. But once we actually did the research, we identified that people thought the price was a fair uh, amount and that they didn't think the price was too high. And so all the individual pieces or all the individual questions we had based on price really didn't help our overall problem. And so a lot of times what we go in there thinking is the problem may not necessarily be the case. And so when we meet with the client, there's some specific questions and themes of questions that we really want to, to make sure we have answers to. And the first thing is, what do they think the problem that they're facing right now is? You know, as we talked about in, in video number one, the issue a lot of times is if we're coming to someone to do research, a lot of times it's too late. And what we may think is the problem may just be a, a symptom, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Oh, was there a major event that created you to notice the problem, or is this something that happened over a long period of time? What is the thing that caused them to notice that this problem exists? Oh, what factors do you think have created this situation? What are the, the items that have contributed to this problem uh, being there? If you don't do anything, what's going to likely happen in the next 12 months? And what do you really plan on accomplishing when gathering this information? And we talk about clarifying the problem. And we need to look at how accurate was the manager's information. And so we want to look at the difference between problems and symptoms. And the way I usually explain this is if you have a runny nose, a cough, and a fever, what's your problem? Is your problem the fact that you have a runny nose? Is the problem the fact that you have a cough? Is the problem the fact that you have a fever? No, your problem is what? The problem is you have a cold. Your symptoms are runny nose, you have a fever, and you have a cough. Those are your symptoms. Business problems are the same thing. 
you know, you may think that your problem has to do with, well, you don't have enough customers. That may not be your problem. That may be a symptom of a, a larger problem. When you talk about defining a problem, generally it needs to be vague. Uh, big picture type of a problem. Uh, something like sales. Sales have reduced 10% in the last year. All right, We'll probably have a lot of symptoms that will lead up to that point. But that's our big problem that we need to solve. And so when we talk about the decision problem, facing the manager, we're talking that this is the basic problem for which marketing research is intended to provide answers or what they think the basic problem is going to be. And so when we talk about developing some potential research problems, generally what we're going to do is we're going to based on the information meeting with a client, we're going to develop several research problems. Evaluate those problems, and then in the next step, we will identify what one research problem we're going to be using. You know, some people will say that you can do multiple research problems in one study. I disagree with that. I think if you try to find out too much information in one study, you end up not getting enough good information to solve anything. And so you're going to pick one research problem and then identify the research objectives. When we talk about the research objectives, basically you're going to generally develop three to five research objectives. And what the objectives are, they're basically questions that you need to answer for you to solve the research problem. So if we go back to the example that I sh we shared about having a cold, the cold is the problem. All right, our research objectives would be first, getting rid of the headache. Second, getting rid of the fever. Third, getting rid of the sore throat. Or fourth, getting rid of the runny nose. And so you wanna solve each of those research objectives. If you solve each of those, then you will end up solving the main problem. And so the research objectives are really there for you to guide and frame your research. And so let's say you're developing a survey. And your research problem is that the sales of a specific product are not at expected levels. And so our research objectives may be how do customers view the design of the product? How do customers view the price of the product? How do customers view the competition of the product? And so now that we have those research objectives, if I'm going to write a survey on this, I know I'm going to have all of my questions focused on one of these three objectives. A lot of times people, when they don't go through all these steps of the process, they start asking specific questions that don't really tie into the main problem. And so every question I write, I'm going to look at it's either a qualifying question or does it follow any of these objectives. If the question doesn't help answer any of the objectives, then I don't need that question in my study. And so then the final step is going to be creating your research proposal. And so within that proposal, we're going to define the problem. We're going to identify our research design in our data sources. We're going to create and identify our sampling plan. Uh, that will entail who's participating in the study, how many people are participating in the study, and how are we going to select the people who are participating in, in the study. We're going to identify the data collection forms. We're going to identify how we're going to analyze this information. We're going to create a, an absolute time schedule for the information that we're going to be covering. We're going to provide them with staffing and cost estimates. And we're going to have uh, an appendices if necessary as part of the proposal. <laughs> Thank you.